Magandang umaga Luzon, magandang hapon Luzon I should say, magandang hapon Visayas, and magandang hapon Mindanao. And of course, good afternoon world. Again, welcome to the afternoon session of Teen Webinar Series Season 2 of the CHED Region 1. Okay, so before we begin, uh, we have again another exciting and very informative topic for this afternoon. We invited two gorgeous and brainy ladies from IBM Philippines to talk to us about uh, P-Tech, uh, free digital learning on tech and professional skills of tomorrow. And again, we'd like to acknowledge again our viewers and our listeners from our uh, YouTube and Facebook. Thank you for being with us, for sticking with us with this series of webinars and we hope that you will continue to patronize and attend our upcoming uh, webinars okay so shall we begin now are you ready yeah of course uh, let me introduce our two speakers we have madam andrea escalona She's one of the IBM Corporate Social Responsibility Management Managers in IBM Asia Pacific. She's responsible for grant making in the Philippines using IBM's broad portfolio of program initiatives that harness IBM's talent and technology in addressing social challenges related to education, healthcare, disasters, women, economic development, and many more. In the previous years, she led the ASEAN CSR team and had regular regional leadership responsibility for IBM's Corporate Service Core, the largest corporate skills-based pro bono consulting program in the world. And of course, after Ma'am Andrea, we also have Ma'am Abigail Lesaka. She's currently the Corporate Liaison for IBM Philippines Pathways in Technology early college high school program, or what we call P-TECH, a global education model that offers public school students all over the world the opportunity to develop skills and competencies that will translate directly competitive careers. She is a licensed secondary teacher, writer, and marketing communications professionals, communications professional with over two decades of experience working in government, academe, and of course, non-profit organization. Let's welcome our two resource speakers, Ma'am Andrea and Ma'am Escalona. How, Ma'am Andrea? Ma'am Abigail? Hello, good afternoon. Kamusta po kayo? Buti naman. Okay, maraming salamat po sa, sa pagpaanyay, sa pagtugon sa aming paanyaya. Nako kami nga po yung nagpapasalamat at inimbitahan nyo kami dito. So? Hello, hello sir. Thank you so much. Excited Everybody. for our learning session this afternoon. Yes, that's it. So, may I give now the floor to our two resource speakers.
So good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you again. No? Uh, before we start, I'd like to thank the leadership and organizers of this webinar from CHED Region 1, led by OIC Director Rogelio Galera Jr., Ms. Lynette Cabanban Kaysam, and Ms. Mel Ancheta, and, and for Danny also for allowing us to present and demo Open P Tech this afternoon. It's a free digital learning platform on tech and professional skills of tomorrow which is designed for teachers and for students. So with the recent need for social distancing um, guidelines no, and, and keeping everyone safe, this is very timely. And it is our pleasure to share an option that you can use uh, during this very important time. So according to the World Economic Forum, 42% of jobs by 2022, which is two short years away from now, will require new skills that touch on emerging technology and new ways of working. So skills such as analytics, design thinking, complex problem solving, creative critical and critical thinking. You know, we talk about jobs of the future and future proofing our jobs as if it's, you know, 10 to 15 years down the road, but it's actually just around the corner. And, you know, particularly for students right now who are undergoing their formal education, it will be the reality that they will be walking into when they graduate. So we need to make sure that, you know, we are working with educational institutions in helping them prepare for the fact that technology and jobs are changing rapidly. It is our belief in IBM that 100% of jobs are going to change because of emerging technology. And those jobs can be jobs in healthcare, education, in business. Um, it doesn't have to be a job in the tech industry like, you know, the software engineers of this world or a cybersecurity analyst. Uh, all jobs are, you know, going to be impacted by technology. And so uh, education systems need support from those who are driving that technology. Uh, the technological, technological change in order to stay on pace and ensure that all of their students are prepared for that reality that they are walking into. No, a reality that technology will be driving a lot of change in whatever career field that uh, you as an end user or as a student are interested in. So at IBM's corporate social responsibility, we take, uh, you know, that's where I'm from in, in IBM. We take this very seriously and we have, um, you know, for some time, we believe very strongly that new collar jobs are really the currency of the future and it is about skills and not just degrees. We have a series of programs uh, that address this going back to 2011 when we launched our brick and mortar PTEC model. It is the model that is now in 24 countries, um, you know, over 200 schools, and we're actually, we have actually been serving around 150,000 students globally. It's a way to really ensure that, you know, secondary institutions, industry, and higher education are working together to prepare students for this new reality and really give them the skills that they need to be competitive in the workforce when they graduate. Uh, we are offering apprenticeships also at IBM. Uh, these are real job training, OJT, uh, in the common term that we use here in the Philippines, um, with important IBM mentorship no, that they can go through to understand what it means to be an IT professional in some of these emerging technology fields like cybersecurity and cloud computing. So we also have a platform that we call Skills Build, which is geared towards people who are currently in the workforce or want to be in the workforce. Uh, and they are seeking to reskill and upskill, you know, to be competitive. We are working very closely with nonprofit organizations in many regions throughout the world in this program to ensure that a wide variety of professionals have the relevant skills and training to be competitive. We have also another platform, which is for the younger set, particularly for grades K to eight. Um, you know, so in helping those students and their educators understand the underlying math skills that are going to prepare them in these STEM fields when they go into high school. And the program is called Teacher Advisor with Watson. 
Finally, the most recently, most recently we launched um, Open PTEC, which is our topic for today. So Open PTEC, as I mentioned earlier, is a free digital learning platform that offers students and their educators the technical and professional skills development to help them be introduced to the future of work. It is primarily geared towards an audience of 14 to 20 year olds, although it is openly available to anybody. It is designed to give you the introduction necessary to give you on ramps to careers that will impact, that will be impacted by um, emerging technologies, particularly in STEM fields. But having said that, we feel very strongly that the introduction that we offer in Open PTEC is relevant to anybody regardless of what um, what they want to do in the future. Uh, we give introductory content and self-paced learning on the topics on the screen that you can see. So we are always expanding that catalog in Open PTEC and thinking of you know, the types of content that will be relevant to the 14 to 20 year old students. We are thinking about the, uh, all the emerging technology fields that we know that are going to shift the world of work. So artificial intelligence, design thinking, data science, cybersecurity, and cloud, in addition to you know, what you see on screen here. We're even adding content on quantum computing in the very near future. So very high tech, right? So, so it's going to be, I think, a first you know, in any platform. But it's not just technical skills that we are you know, trying to drive home for students here in this platform. We also want to provide um, learning in the professional skills that matter for every industry. And it's going to help students in the work they are doing at the second, secondary level or uh, you know, at the university level now. Skills like you know critical and creative thinking, the ability to collaborate effectively with others, ability to present well, um, stay agile, you know, while bringing together quality work products. So these are all the competencies that matter in every industry, not just the tech industry, and are going to make you more efficient as a student in the present. So let me just um, share with you, um, you know, on the next slide. Um, you know, in, put into context, no open PTEC and um, and PTEC. No open PTEC actually builds off of the PTEC model. We've taken our brick and mortar PTEC model, which again is in 24 countries and over 200 schools. We've added all of the best practice content into an openly available platform that can help scale those best practices to a global audience no matter where you are and that is very important at this very <laughs> that is the current time so we are providing students with the skills and digital credentials and career guidance that they need to have a better idea of what they want to focus on and what the future of work actually looks like um, so there are six tenets that we often talk about in our PTEC schools or the PTEC model. So you can see that in the upper, you know, the upper boxes on screen. Um, the open PTEC is building off of that and leveraging four of the key ones. So let me talk about some of those now. But we are actually in a private part public, in a private public partnership in open PTEC. So when Abby walks you through later in the demo, you will see a lot of content that is from the IBM point of view. But that is not the only content actually that we have in the platform because we are working constantly with nonprofit content providers and other industry partners to build out our content. So this is bigger than, you know, this is a bigger than IBM platform. It is very much a public private partnership in that sense. We are also focused on workplace learning, helping students and their educators understand how to prepare for the workplace competencies that are really key and understand what it's like to you know for example look for a job apply for a job interview for a job and so it's you know this this is openly available platform that anybody can sign up entirely for free so we know that there are a host of online learning platforms out there but we do think that there are you know, important Open PTEC value drivers that distinguish Open PTEC from the other digital learning platforms that you may encounter. First, 
we are making digital badges that are typically available not only to IBM or other industry professionals. Uh, we're making that available to students and their educators entirely for free. You can come to Open P Tech and get a badge for cybersecurity. For example, cybersecurity fundamentals. You can get a professional badge, uh, professional skills badge also. Um, in the Philippines, since we are English speaking, an English speaking country, we have access to additional badges from our cognitive class AI collection. It could be things like, you know, building your own chatbot, blockchain 101. You know, it has more technical courses. So we are offering all of these for free. Um, and students can start building their professional credentials in LinkedIn, for example, and or their resumes at an earlier age than they would otherwise be able to. It doesn't mean, of course, that they are going to be ready to work into a job of a cybersecurity analyst, for example. Um, but it does show an employer or to an educational institution that this learner is very serious about honing their skill set and making sure that you know it is a relevant skill or a relevant skill set for what they ultimately want to do when they graduate and are done with the formal education. So one other thing, in my opinion, is that rather than offering content that exists out of the box on other platforms, we have worked with a team of instructional designers to modify the content to make it particularly engaging and accessible to a student audience. Oftentimes, you know, you encounter content in another third-party provider that they are, you know, actually very quality content, but it requires a lot of baseline familiarity, for example, with the, you know, technology terminology. On Open P Tech, we stepped back a little and made it digestible for 14 to 20 year olds to understand the base level. Again, this is introductory content to ensure that students understand their level at their level why AI matters, what the various um, terms related to AI are. You know, we've defined that you know, very clearly for a younger audience and for an audience who has never been introduced to these concepts before. So it's a good way to give them an on-ramp to, you know, have the context they need to make sense of the more technical deep dives down the line. We're also very much prioritizing the teachers in this platform. I know there are a lot of teachers on the audience now. No? So if you are an educator and you create an account, you will see a view that is very similar to the student view. You'll have access to the same learning content and badges, uh, but you will also have access to a teacher channel that gives you particular instructional resources that you can leverage in class. Um, once students have taken that self-paced asynchronous content on the platform, we have suggestions for you to use in more of a blended learning fashion where you can do an engaging project-based activity on blockchain, for example, or an artificial intelligence or on cybersecurity. So we're building out, and you know, as I mentioned earlier, you know, the catalog, you know, continuously. We're enriching the platform in that sense. We also have the ability for teachers to monitor student progress and see how much learning your students have completed on the platform. Uh, we definitely think that while well, this platform is accessible anywhere and you as an individual learner could sign on and take the learning without a teacher in any required fashion, we think that the best way to use this platform is with a teacher to extend the learning any individual might be doing on their own and make it a richer learning experience. Finally, um, in addition to the technical and professional skills development being offered in this platform at an introductory level, we also, um, we're also leveraging this platform to be one that is very much about career exposure. So, you know, giving students a flavor of how it is to work as a UX professional or a UX designer, for example, um, or what it's like to work as a solar engineer. Um, you know, giving them a flavor for different career fields that they, um, you know, they were not exposed to previously or have not considered in the past. So it is opening up additional doors 
for them to consider as they finish formal education and think about you know what they want in the future so it's very unusual huh? um but you know uh, we're very ser really serious about that and so you can see those actually in what we call the career vignettes in 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 the open ptech platform So lastly, no, I mentioned earlier that we are, you know, taking the teacher persona very seriously. So one thing Abby will show you later is the ability to see the teacher resources when we get into the platform. Now, teachers have access to all of the same badges, as I mentioned. We encourage educators to take the same learning as their students and learn alongside, you know, them. You know, um, because I think it's highly likely at this time that, you know, there are some teachers that are, you know, not really at, at this point yet, not, you know, subject matter experts on topics like AI, cloud, cybersecurity. Um, so it's a very good time to learn alongside your students and, you know, extend that learning, um, you know, to some of the project-based learning activities that we are offering on the teacher resources channel. So Abby will show that later. So with that, um, I think uh, we're going to the more exciting part. I will turn it over to Abby, uh, who will play a short video um, on Open P Tech, and then she will also take you through a demo. Abby? About opportunity and access, and we think about industry's involvement, we know that it's so important to think beyond the day-to-day -day classroom. And so online opportunities um, for students to demonstrate continued learning becomes incredibly important. First of all, I think the technology component is really big for our kids. As much as we can integrate and incorporate technology into our classes, the easier and more convenient things become for students. I mean, they're always using their phones, they're playing video games, they're using iPads, whatever the case may be. So if you're able to incorporate learning along with those devices and technology platforms they're already using, it just makes more sense for us and it's more relevant for them. You could do it at your own time. You could pause a lesson, you could play it back. Um, I personally could track their progress. They enjoy that because when I've noticed that someone shows an interest in it and when I check that they haven't really moved forward, you know, I get to check them on it. And this really does provide a place for employees and students to be curious, right? They can go after things that potentially they're curious about and really do a deep dive into that learning. And then it opens up and branches out into other things as well. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hello, yes, thank you, Ferdani. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you, Andrea, for that uh, very uh, comprehensive uh, discussion of what Open P Tech is all about and what's in store for our users and learners. No, so it's it's a very robust platform. So as you can see on your screen, um, this is Open P Tech. It can be accessed by a uh, www.ptech.org slash open-p-tech. But you can just type open ptech on your browser and it's going to point you to the same uh, web page. So what is open ptech all about? Um, we've had a 30 minute discussion of open ptech and uh, let me show you what we have been talking about. So at the moment, I, I mean, right now, and I think it's forever, Open PTEC is, is free for all users, and uh, but preferably uh, the contents have been designed for students ages 14 to 20. And as Ms. Andrea said, this has been uh, uh, created by a diverse team of instructional designers, former educators, subject matter experts. That is uh, really industry relevant. So it means, uh, what does it mean when, it's, when we say industry relevant? Um, these are, um, created uh, with the, you know, the new technologies in mind. So uh, that's, that's the reason why we're saying that uh, the technologies presented here are really the skills of tomorrow. At the same time, what we're also saying is 
Um, beyond just the technical skills, um, we're also, we also want to present professional skills. And professional skills, as we always say in the ed education field, the essential professional skills are the soft skills. So what are these uh, skills that we've been talking about? Uh, skills about like communication, collaboration. These are things that can be uh, found in Open P Tech. So let me walk you through um, the landing page of Open P Tech, and it will show you the curriculum. So what's what's included? So it's going to show you, let's say, artificial intelligence, for example. So once you click um, the add the artificial intelligence button, it's going to show you a sneak pre peek, a preview of what the content of artificial intelligence will be. So as we said uh, earlier, this is a self-paced um, learning. Um, uh, portal and it's going to show you uh, how long it will take for example a student to complete um, all of these topics so for example for artificial intelligence it's going to take about six hours if you do it from start to finish but because of the uh, asynchronous uh, uh, the uh, design of open p -Tech, students can actually come back to it uh, as soon as they finish a certain segment of the uh, the platform so i will i'll show it i'll show that to you later as we go along but just to scroll down and what the contents of artificial intelligence is for example um it's going to show you how to build a chatbot and all that stuff and it's going to present to you a badge so what does a badge mean a badge is a equivalent to a certificate so this is our the usual certificates that we ask after every learning session or activity workshop that we attend and in our case, uh, as a technology company, and I think this is also the wave of the future, that people will be earning badges. And these badges, uh, we encourage people to uh, use them once they've earned the badges and put them on their LinkedIn profiles. Uh, LinkedIn is very uh, is rapidly becoming uh, very uh, used you know rapidly by a lot of people by our, and then we also encourage our students those entering senior high school and uh, college to really create their linkedin profiles so that they can take advantage of the you know the badging mechanism as well so that's just the tip of the iceberg now so uh, let me go back and just show you that um, apart from, uh, you know, the curriculum that we are presenting, uh, we've really designed Open P Tech with students and parents, teachers and faculty, schools and organizations in mind. So, um, so there. So um, if you click, uh, for example, if you're a student or a parent and you want to register in Open P Tech, um, you can actually see what the, the, at, at, a, at a glance, what are the contents, you know, of... Uh, what is, what is really the benefits for students and parents? So there is a registration button, or if you've logged in already to the system, um, you can actually log in. And then it's gonna explain to you, uh, you know, why, what this for and what are the benefits for use. If you're a teacher in the faculty, you can actually capitalize or leverage on the wealth of information that Open P Tech has. And um, it's going to guide you, in a sense, um, in terms of extending your classroom learning, um, particularly, if, for example, you're a computer science teacher, and you really want to enrich, uh, for example, the learning of students in terms of data science. So later on, I'm going to show you um, what, what are those, uh, how, the, how the Open P Tech portal really looks like. And finally, uh, as a school or an organization, and we encourage, um, you know, schools in general or administrators to really partner with us. Um, so nonprofit organizations, uh, the reason why we want to do that is because many of them have already been doing their training and their upskilling for a lot of uh, people out of school youths or people not in the formal workforce. So um, I think it's also very relevant for them. And still, the platform is free. All they have to go, all they have to do is really go through the registration portion. So there's a bulk registration for big organizations, so that uh, their students won't have to do it one by one. All they, all they will do is really um, uh, uh, 
uh, submit uh, the list of uh, their students and their emails, and then the administrator or the teacher who will who will be facilitating it for them, and they're good to go. And they're uh, they'll be created uh, an administrative administrator or school profile under Open T Tech. Okay, so so let's begin. So for example, I'm a teacher and I want to register. Uh, all I have to do is click the register button, and it's it only takes just a few um, questions, a uh, few steps for you to register. So let me just uh, take a step back and just 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 share with you that um, preferably you have a Gmail account to be able to register, or if you have a LinkedIn account, that would be okay as well. Or if you have an IBM ID, you can actually do that. the The, the system will actually guide you in terms of creating your all of all of the three so if, in case you don't have a gmail account for example and you have a yahoo the system will actually ask you if you want to create an ibm id using your yahoo email for example so it's not that difficult you'll just have to go through a few questions and then you'll be there so after you've registered you just enter your country your email your name and then you're done so if you're a teacher you will be receiving a url so the URL will help you share the URL to your students. And the URL will, will actually be clicked by the student per person. So you get a personalized URL so that all of the students uh, will actually go to your um, page so that you can actually administer their learning for them. So let, let me show you how it looks like. So once you've done the quick uh, registration process, this is what the uh, landing page of your Open P Tech platform looks like. Okay, so as you can see on your screen, okay, there. So it'll actually show you the landing page of Open P Tech, uh, your learning, your personalized learning. And I suggest you click on, as a starter, once you've registered, click on the profile. And in your profile, it's actually going to ask you to select your areas of interest. And uh, these are really um, baseline information, inf uh, topics that, you know, you don't really have to have previous uh, expertise or experience in any of these topics. So, um, so I suggest you click all of them so that you can learn more about what is artificial intelligence or blockchain and all that. But beyond that, you can also learn about professional skills. As I mentioned, and uh, there's actually a lot, um, a lot here, but you can explore this just, you know, as starters. And then uh, click on the updates and reminders um, if you want to receive periodic emails from us so that you will be updated by, you know, newer content that we will be updating in the coming weeks and months. So click continue, and then it's going to show you your profile. So if you have a picture and put your full name there, I suggest for students, please put your real name so that your teacher will be able to really know who you are. Uh, please don't use code names and all that. Uh, it would be best if you use your real name uh, that use, that's used in school. And of course, if you have a picture that would help and then just click done. And once you're, uh, once you're done with that quick uh, update of your profile, then it's going to show you the uh, actual learning content of Open P Tech. So, ayan, diba? So, it's not very difficult. Actually, as you can see on your screen, if I scroll down, there is a um, spotlight section. So, this is this middle part here. And it actually shows you already what's, you know, at a glance, what are the contents and what are the new things about Open P Tech. So I'm going to share uh, more about these later. Right. And then if you scroll down, since you've already selected the topics that you, you want to learn, some of your main page. So everything is really in the main page, very easy to use, very easy to navigate. So it's going to show you, for example, what your recent activity is, um, what are the recommended channels. And in this case, um, because you, I've selected all of the topics in Open P Tech, all of the topics will actually show here. So um, as Andrea was saying earlier, 
uh, our modules on professional skills, career vignettes, teacher, and then the teacher resources. So all of that, uh, all the way down. But let me point you to uh, what's very interesting about Open PTEC is if you're a teacher and you signed up as a teacher, you will have access to these teacher resources. If you're a student, you will not be able to access the teacher resources. What are these teacher resources for? It's actually uh, going to help our teachers, uh, you know, have a more enriching uh, classroom discussion or flexible learning with their students now that we're in, uh, uh, you know, and no, we're not really face to face, but uh, because we're doing some kind of flexible learning, like what we're doing now, uh, I think uh, all of these resources can also help the, our teachers, particularly at this time that they're developing their um, curriculum and their instruction. Um, this is really the training period for your students, and this is what I understand also why uh, the CHED Regional Office is doing these very interesting webinars series this is just very uh, enriching you know to everyone attending these uh, sessions okay so so as so uh, let me just show you walk you through what are the contents of teacher resources there's actually a lot here and uh, i'm going to show you later how it is done so for example i'm a student i can just on my own um learn at my own pace you know, topics such as artificial intelligence, for example. So let me just click on artificial intelligence. And this is what it will show me. So there. Um, so this is the, this is where the initial information about what artificial intelligence is. And it's going to show me uh, how long this short course will take. For example, it's going to take me 45 minutes to take to learn artificial intelligence. So all I have to do once I'm here is click Manage Enrollment there, and it's going to launch uh, into another page. OK, there. And then, um, OK, what is artificial intelligence? It's going to show you that. And then there's an intro. It's, if you, as you can see, um, this uh, mini module on artificial intelligence is actually broken into many bite-sized pieces of information so that it's not very difficult really for the learner uh, to really adjust you know to to the concepts because uh, we are we understand that the, you know we we're really just trying to ease in all of these information and that's the reason why we're very proud of this um, this learning platform so let me just click, for example, introduction. So it only takes about three minutes to go over the contents of artificial intelligence and uh, a two minute video or less than two minute video on what artificial intelligence is. Now we understand that there are students who may have difficulty accessing videos. Uh, it might uh, take up more data or probably some uh, erratic, uh, internet connection then the good thing is there is a video transcript and the video transcript will actually show you what's in what are the what's the script you know what is the text of the video content that you're actually clicking so and then after three minutes once you've gone through the video and the text you can just click let's keep going and it's gonna do a check mark and the check mark will signify that you've done three minutes of learning under artificial intelligence. So as we mentioned, you can always come back to this at any time. And then once you've gone through all of the topics, let's say you're very active and your student is really very interested to finish this in 45 minutes, they can actually already take the quiz. Yeah, there is a quiz portion. There is an assessment portion already. Why do we need this? Because once you've, um, why, why do we have an assessment part? Because that's really the reason, that's the really the point of earning the badge. So you cannot really earn the badge without taking the quiz. So let me just show you how the quiz looks like. So as you can see, it's quite uh, friendly, user-friendly. It's actually gamified to the level of the user. So it's something that they're really, familiar with you know it's it has some graphics and very easy to use so 
So, may lifelines, you know, things like that. So, multiple choice questions. Um, so, for example, uh, they can click, they can click, and then they get the wrong answer. Then they can try again. So, what happens if uh, they fail to uh, finish this quiz? Then it's okay. They can come back to it again. And then they can um, try to finish the quiz. Um, and then as soon as they are, they've completed the quiz, uh, it means that they've passed this uh, short mini module. And what's interesting is, uh, let's say you've already accomplished, um, you've already accomplished the, what is artificial intelligence all about? And then the students can earn a badge. And um, how do you get the badges? Students will be notified via email that they've already uh, finished this portion of the their training and then they get an email and they can already uh click um there's a there's a link there on how to get their badges and how they can upload this into their um a linkedin account so so yeah it's a very interesting uh functionality okay so let me just show you um Okay, let me just go back. So just click the PTEC uh, logo to go back to the home screen. Let me just point you to another module that we're very, uh, very proud to present to our uh, students and learners and our audience today. Uh, there's so many people I think watching and people from uh, government, uh, from the schools, high schools, even from DepEd I think are also watching um, this uh, webinar. So, and it's perfect because we really want Open P-Tech to be um, introduced at least uh, to grade nine students, if you are interested. Okay, there. So there is a new section we just recently added in Open P-Tech. Okay, I hope you can see my screen. And uh, there is a new course and badge. It's called Explorations into Mindfulness. Okay, and uh, what is Explorations into Mindfulness all about? So actually in IBM, we've, uh, we've, been, uh, we've been developing this module for our employees because uh, not only does mindfulness uh, has been scientifically proven to really increase focus and attention in the workplace, but also with the learning of, and the cognitive abilities of our students. That is why we also want to share uh, mindfulness a course to our students and to anyone who's really interested to learn about mindfulness. So let me just click again, manage enrollment and launch the page. So this is how explorations into mindfulness looks like. There, and uh, as you can see, as, you, as previously shared, uh, it's still broken up into 15 minute, 20 minute, um sections where you can just take a few courses each day and then you can work your way all the way to you going to finish your um survey and quiz and you can actually earn a mindfulness badge okay let me just click welcome for example so why is mindfulness very important um beyond just you know learning um and these there are actually practical activities here um that the students can do. And for example, each uh, mini, pro, mini course in mindfulness opens up to a mindful minute. So it will actually show the students, um, you know, just one minute of, for them to take a deep breath, you know, um, relax and really, really center themselves, focus themselves on, you know, being present. And that is really the importance of mindfulness. And um, we're really into not we're not really into the meditation or the religious part of mindfulness. But we re what we really want to share to our students is really the practice of being present and in the moment, so that it will increase their ability to focus and to really um, somehow it will also relieve their anxieties, and it's also a way for them to to uh, be more focused and attentive to what they're doing. So it helps in actually the learning process. So once you're done, for example, 
Um, there's a video. Um, if you can't view the video, you can watch, you can click the video transcript. And this is the badge. So eventually, once you've completed the mindfulness program, you will get this um, IBM badge on mindfulness. So there. So very, very interesting activity. In fact, um, there's also a section here that you can, that the students and the teachers can actually put their reflection. So for example, it's broken up into little parts of what have you learned from the previous information? And you can put in, you know, just a little bit about um, what, what is going on in your mind. Let's say I found this topic to be very helpful to me and things like that. So it's really a way for them to express um themselves at the same time it also is an exercise of communication it improves their communication abilities as well so if you go if they've gone through this and it's not part of the um, scoring it's really just for them to save and then they can refer to it again look back of what they learned so far and once you've done with the course content you can just click that you've accomplished the welcome for in, an introduction to mindfulness and uh, we know that uh, the practice of mindfulness takes hours, weeks, and maybe months to practice. That's why once you've completed this course, we actually want um, teachers to actually expand this in, in their learning, in the students' learning. And we're also creating some ex expansion activities that, that they can do. So before you end the course, it will actually point you to more resources. So there, so there are apps that, uh, you know, um, apps that, that we think can help the students practice their um, mindfulness more. So very easy apps, you know, normally we just download all of these apps like uh, for meditation or for clearing our mind and all that, just for a one minute, two minute breather, then it will it really help. There are also websites, helpful websites for the teacher and the students, and recommended books and uh, other, other resources available. So there. So once you've checked out all of these resources and the teacher thinks that this can be expanded in the learning or the flexible learning, let's say you have a learning management system, and you, this can be part of their assignments or discussions, then you can do so. Okay, so finally, all they have to do is take the quiz again at the end. And once they've passed the quiz, um, they will get an email that they've earned the mindfulness badge. And the mindfulness badge can actually be downloaded in the, uh, in the there, there will be, a, they, they will be pointed to a web page. Uh, and Acclaim is our uh, partner in terms of giving these uh, digitally recognized badges. So these are really authentic badges that you can use in your uh, LinkedIn profiles. Okay, so I'm going to pause and uh, go back. Okay, just uh, let me just backtrack a bit and then go back to the main page. Okay, so this is the... Again, this is the open PTEC uh, landing page. So for the users, okay, there you go. And then um, if you kind of, as a first time user, you get lost along the way, uh, it's okay. You can just click the tutorial, just click the question mark button uh, on top and just click the tutorial. So if you click the tutorial, it's gonna begin um, just just a few slides on just to remind you and to reintroduce you to what the functionalities of Open PTEC are. As as mentioned, um, this is not only uh, for laptops. Um, actually, Open PTEC is um, is designed for even mobile phones and even tablets. So whenever you're mobile, you can just uh, take take advantage of all of these learning uh, learning skills. Uh, and at, you know at uh, on your mobile phone, for example. And uh, there's also a functionality where you can just search the topic that you're looking for. For example, you couldn't find uh, what is design thinking, for example. So all you have to do is really uh, 
click on the search button and it's going to pop up all the topics uh, about design thinking. And uh, what's interesting about Open P Tech as well is that it already shows you how many badges uh, you've accomplished, you know, your learning queue, for example. Uh, for like, just like the movie watch list, uh, for example, when you're lalo na ngayon, madalas tayong mag Netflix, for example. And, you know, in Netflix, it actually tell you how many movies you've actually watched and, you know, if you to continue watching a certain movie. So it's very similar to this. Um, it's going to show you, you know, where, where you've left off. So if you come back to, uh, for example, AI, artificial intelligence, you can complete it at your own pace, at your own time. And it also has a way to give you more recommendations. So if you want to learn more, depending on your um, interest, and the, it, the, the portal will actually introduce more learning for you if you're really that interested in the, these topics. And uh, there's also a par portion where you can subscribe and unsubscribe. So at any time, if you feel this is not very interesting to you, you can just unsubscribe. And there's a mobile app. So uh, we suggest that for mo mobile phone users, uh, there is a quick uh, way for mobile phone users to just download the app and uh, put it in their mobile phones. And in a few easy steps, you can actually uh, put, put Open P Tech in your mobile phone. There you go. So that's about the uh, tutorial. So you can always go back to that. It's just as really on top of the Open P Tech platform. All right. So this now leads me to the uh, more interesting part of Open P Tech. Uh, why uh, earlier I showed you um, the uh, view for students. What I'm going to show you now is the view for teachers. So if you're a teacher and there's actually a way for you to um, to really check out you know your teacher resources and it will also show you the reports about your students so you just click here uh, the, the right hand uh, side just click your photo for example and click open PTech advisor reports so there and once you once teachers have this so only teachers would have access to this and administrators and um, it's going to show you three functionalities. So the overall progress report, you can actually see. So let me just click, for example. So uh, normally you would see a roster of your students lined up here. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have my students lined up yet. So there will be no names here. But normally it's going to present to you how many of your students have accomplished a certain badge or a certain topic, for example. So it will actually give you the uh, summary of what they've accomplished so far. Okay, let me go back. And there's also a way for you to, to line up their learning. So for example, if you're a computer science teacher, and uh, let me just backtrack a bit and uh, show you, um, for example, ah, okay. For example, you want to you want your students to learn about mindfulness. And you are a teacher, so all you have to do is click the actions button. And once you have under the actions button, you will see the manager actions. So as the teacher, you gain manager actions. And um, there is a way for you to uh, just the same way uh, as I that I presented earlier, see the completion rate of your team, but if you want, for example, uh, you are a teacher and you only, you have 30 students and you want to assign a certain topic only to 10, 10 students, there is actually a way in this uh, Open P Tech platform to just uh, assign uh, specific modules or specific topics to the students. Since I don't have uh, our my students here yet, then I cannot really uh, show you right now, but that, Essentially, all you have to do is select the names uh, of your learners. And once you've selected the particular learner, then you can move and they will be notified. They will be notified via email that they've accomplished, uh, that, 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 that you are telling them 
to accomplish their explorations into mindfulness badge. So, and then once they click it, then you will also be able to track on their development and if they've learned, if are they learning or not. So there, there's actually a way for you also in that mechanism where you can set a deadline. So for example, you met on Monday or you emailed them on Monday and then by Wednesday you want this accomplished already then you can actually set the deadline for that. Okay, so, um, and then finally for the, the teacher, the, for the teacher, um, the teacher actually has, um, let me just go back to the main page of uh, Open P Tech and just click here on the, uh, dot, the square dots at the right hand side. There is a portion here called Your Learning Builder. And your learning builder, you just click it for the teachers. It means you're going to create the learning for them. So specific informations or, for example, so there's actually three um, functionalities. No? So, for example, um, there are learning activities, channels, and then learning plans. Okay, so what are these the learning activities, channels, and learning plans all about? So learning activities, you can create uh, single lessons. Uh, for example, you want the, so you just click, for example, register an activity. And for example, um, you, you want them to learn more about mindfulness. So all you have to do is, for example, uh, get a link. Let's say you have a YouTube account. You have a YouTube video that you want to share with them. Uh, all you have to do is just put the URL and just click continue. Okay, so it has to be complete together with the, the full URL. So once you've created, for example, that link to your students, then um, just say the title, what's it, what's it all about? What is it for? So, so all you have to do is just say, explain what your video is all about. Uh, please watch a video demo on um, creating um, uh, a chatbot, for example, and then put the keywords, um, put it in what what language it will be used. So if it's in English, what type of activity, if it's an assessment, an audio book, a classroom community, you can just say video because you shared a video to them and how long it will take. So for example, the video takes about an hour, 30 minutes to finish, then put it there and select an icon. So what's the most appropriate icon for your activity? And once you're done, just click save. And it's gonna create um, an additional learning activity for your students. So there, okay. And then um, that's how interesting uh, the activity, this uh, portal really works. So partly Open PTEC is a learning management system in a way, but it doesn't have the full functionality. But I think the more important ones are really uh, outlined here. So let me just go back to your learning builder. Okay. So again, uh, I showed you with you earlier how to create a learning activity for your students. Oh, and then I also wanted to share with you that if you have more activities that you want to share with them through a box folder or a Google Drive account that you want the students to access, you can actually do so the same way I did it earlier. Just put the uh, URL of your Google Drive and then the students can actually access the contents of your Google Drive. So if there is some downloadable content that you can share with them, some PDFs, some assignments or instructions that you want them to learn for the week, for example, then they can actually access your URL using the learning activity um, feature. Um, but beyond that, um, there's actually more um, ways for the teachers to create learning plans for their students. So uh, what, just, what the only difference is um, if you're doing a learning plan, you can actually do sequenced content. So it's not just a single lesson. You can actually create, let's say, a full uh, first semester content for your, for your learners using this platform. 
and uh, the channels, um, you can repurpose uh, previous content that's found in Open P Tech, and you can also direct them to other content outside. So that's for the learning builder, and that's for the student, and uh, that's for the teacher, I mean. So I think I'm done with the, uh, so that's it. That's basically the functionalities of Open P Tech. So I just have a few few more slides just to show you, just so that we can recap um, what are the essential uh, users that can take advantage of Open P Tech. Okay, let me just uh, I stop sharing. Okay, hold on. Let me just stop sharing for a second. Okay, and uh, let me just show you who our intended users for Open P Tech are. And okay, share screen. Okay, we're all learning. We're all lifelong learners here. So I'm done with the demo. So let me just show you what who are the intended audience for Open P Tech. Oh, but Open P Tech is really for everyone. But the following personas or the following users are really the ones who will benefit most, I think, from the use for using Open P Tech. So what who will these be? Um, possibly people, uh, students doing their internships and uh, teachers who are doing some career guidance. Um, they can actually take advantage of the contents of Open P Tech, particularly the professional skills section where they get introduced to concepts like communication skills and all that, uh, which I think I wasn't able to show you, but uh, you can explore um, the site. It's actually uh, very easy to navigate and it's free for everyone. So I encourage you to uh, check out the, the platform. Of course, if you're a STEAM learner, or these are for our senior high school students, for example, who are in the STEM track. And um, the STEM track students um, actually have a modified the curriculum following our senior high school curriculum. Um, but uh, I think uh, all the concepts that we've presented can actually help them have introductory or baseline knowledge of uh, all of these new technologies coming up and things that they might be interested in when once they enter college. And for the college readiness students, uh, students who are preparing for job interviews or um, doing internships, it's also very uh, useful for them. So there's a lot you know, of, people, of teachers who can take advantage of open P tech, you know, um, not only subject matter experts, but uh, teachers who are doing workplace learning um, curriculum. Um, uh, these are teachers who are really focused into the essential skills. And I think it's also very timely that we're talking about uh, workplace learning because uh, now that we've really, we're focusing on um, simplifying or maybe choosing really what's essential in our curriculum, then uh, we believe that essential skills are also very important in the teaching of, uh, of our students these days. Of course, computer science teachers, uh, teacher uh, career prep teachers and counselors, and uh, college professors uh, who are really uh, uh, introducing their students to real world concepts and activities. So they, they will be the ones uh, who will really benefit from Open P Tech. So just to give you a snapshot of what's in store for Open P Tech, earlier we presented um, what are the current offerings of Open P Tech? So AI, Internet of Things, um, Introduction to Mindfulness, Agile at IBM, Data Science, Blockchain, all of these concepts are already available in the Open P Tech um, platform. But beyond that, we're actually improving um, the site to have more interesting uh, and more industry uh, related content that will really help our students as they venture into uh, higher higher levels. So there. And uh, okay, so very simple, very simple, I think, for the teachers who are 
already very used to all of these uh, technologies. So again, uh, I already mentioned earlier the ways to register, but if you have it didn't catch that, there's actually three ways for the for the student for the students, teachers, and schools to register. And if you're a student, you to just do open registration, or if you're a parent, just log in um, and then just uh, create a, a, an account, and you're good to go. If you're a teacher and you want to enroll your students, um, all you have to do is register as a teacher, put in your school or organization, and the system will actually send you a unique URL, which you can send to your students uh, to register for their school's open PTEC account. Okay, and then finally, bulk registration. So if you're if you're thinking of sharing this with 60 or more students or 100 students in your school, we suggest you do the bulk registration so that it will make it easier for us to be able to upload the, the users in, in the platform. At the same time, be able to have the administrator uh, content, uh, administrator access to the uh, portal. So, yeah, so that's basically it. Um, there's these emails are actually found in the Open P Tech um, website, and you can just email them anytime. These are the administrators who can respond to your queries. But you can also get in touch with us if you have questions. Um, yeah, we're very happy to do so. So there, and that ends my demo for this afternoon. Uh, thank you so much for uh, allowing me to share what we've been doing so far and to share the good news of Open P-Tech to everyone. Thank you, Ma'am Abby, and thank you, Ma'am Andrea, for those very informative and very useful information. I'm sure our uh, 2,080 uh, viewers and participants are ready to uh, ask or cast their questions. So <laughs> to our participants, uh -huh. uh, just, just post your quest questions, and then we will try to accommodate as many questions as we could, Mam Abi and Mam Andrea. Okay. <laughs> May limit po okay. question or okay lang? Okay. Okay lang. Thank okay. you. First question from Jennifer Mapa. Are there are there canned programs that teachers can use as a starting point to build their curriculum? So any any of you, Mam Andrea or Mam Abi, can answer this question. Hi, uh, good afternoon, Jennifer. No? Um, I'm not 100% sure uh, what you mean by canned programs, but uh, when you go into the PTEC uh, tool, uh, as Abby showed you earlier, there are modules for each topic. So, for example, if you want uh, to explore a professional skills related topic, on communications, let's say. So you can find a communications topic and then when you click on that, may mga ano na doon, may mga uh, parang learning plan for communications itself. And so you can finish that. Uh, and there are some courses in the tool that will allow you to earn a badge. Um, and so, yon. So if you, if you're, um, can if can here means yung ayos na siya yes ah uh, ganun talaga yung format ng tool thank you ma'am andrea any uh, rejoinder or addendum kay ma'am abi no more okay from uh, brian mislang can p tech have a randomized features for questions on assessment especially in quiz portion because there's a tendency that it can be screenshot and be shared with other students. Oh. I think the questions for the quizzes, they're not necessarily exactly the same question. Sometimes they jumble up the answers for the, for the question and it's not always the same um, numbering. Mga ganyan. So it's hard, Dred. It's, it's not that easy. Uh, I just wanted to add. Yes, Mama B. 
Um, I think, uh, I guess, to ensure quality, um, since uh, these badge courses are really offered by um, IBM, and this, these are actually same uh, offerings offered to IBMers and other professionals. So these online courses, uh, assessments, you know, the ones that you've seen earlier, they're actually um, meant, you know, they're to really think of the, the progress of the learner. And it's not easily randomized when it comes to, for example, choosing just any answer. Um, because it, it, the system will actually ensure baseline level of knowledge and retention before the badge is earned. So that's how the uh, platform has developed. Thank you. Thank you. From Evelyn uh, R. Bagona. Thank you very much, ma'am. Ma can I register as one teacher with three subjects taught together with respective students? Three subjects. Um, but, uh, well, uh, three subjects meaning three sections, for example. Three, uh, perhaps maybe she's talking about, she's handling three subjects so with different students. So, yes, definitely, um, as a teacher, you can actually add, for example, 90 students. So, per section, you have 30. So, because there is that learning plan builder that I presented earlier, you can just select, um, for example, the 30 students to be able to uh, uh, review data science subjects, for example. And if you want uh, the next 30 students to just go into several of the topics, you can actually customize for your particular class. So you can actually do that as a teacher. Okay, thank you. Another question from Eugene, the best Gabriel. How can we be sure, so sure, that our students cannot access or open the portion for teachers or faculty in P-TECH? Um, does it, are, is he referring to um, security, like people might uh, hack into the platform and be able to get uh, the users? Uh, is that is that how it's, I think that's the, that was the question. But I think um, uh, if, if I'm not mistaken, I'm not a very technical person, but the fact that we're using a single sign-on email so that's why the reason I presented earlier that you can only register using your Gmail, your LinkedIn, or an IBM ID. It actually shows you how secure the platform is because we do not allow other email providers to really be uh, uh, uploaded or things like that to be used in the platform. And at the same time, I think as IBM, a technology company, um, we you can be sure that uh, all the data of our students and our schools are protected um, when we have uploaded, uh, once they've uploaded their data in the system. Yeah. And there's actually a legal requirement. Um, I, I think we forgot to mention that, that if you're 18 and if you're not 18 years old, because there is a legal, um, it will ask the system, uh, the, the age of digital consent in the Philippines, and I, in, gener in general, is about 18 years old. So if you're a young student, for example, maybe you're 10 years old and you want to register in the portal, it will ask, the system will actually ask you to put the parent's email in the system so that the parent can give access to their, to their daughter or their son to be able to use the system. So that's how we understand the, uh, the functionality. Okay. So can I can I just add something? Yes, um, please. Um, just like any platform, diba, that we have when we register, we have our own email IDs and then we have our own passwords. The faculty also have to be very careful <laughs> with keeping your passwords for for the tool, diba? Um, and so you know, we we should all follow the same uh, rules that you know that we follow for other platforms as well. You know, whether they be just our email platform or whatever, so that your students cannot access also what's uh, inside. But you know, tool wise, you know, we, we have all of the necessary security uh, options on for that. Well said. Okay, another question from Judith Sekosana. 
how is open ptech different from microsoft teams because right now i am using ms teams for many virtual classrooms and i am thinking if open ptech would be more user friendly and have more added features I answer that. So uh, yes, I'm please. not familiar with uh, Microsoft Teams. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's like uh, a, a way for you to communicate virtually. Um, it's like Zoom or WebEx and things like that. So it, it actually, uh, I'm not sure if it has the learning management capability. Um, but if it has, um, we're not. So Open PTEC, from what I shared with you earlier, we don't really have a, a mechanism for the students and the teachers to communicate directly. Apart from the uh, learning builder for the teachers, um, the students cannot comment uh, in, in the actual platform. So they cannot really create a chat group and do comments in that, in that section, things like that. So uh, we don't have that functionality, but what we have beyond Microsoft Teams is really the content, and content is king. Um, IBM has really uh, uh, prepared all of these, uh, you know, new and emerging technologies all in one learning platform. That's why we have Open P Tech. So that's, I think, uh, what is the the unique uh, unique selling point of of Open P Tech. Uh, we don't really have the functionalities of, let's say, Google Classroom and all the other uh, learning management system. Okay. Thank you. From uh, UV Espineda Villanueva, is there a possibility that IBM create a learning platform for non-science course? Um, at this point, we have not seen any um, sort of direction going there. You know? um, primarily, we're focused more on the STEM um, arena. Uh, but, you know, who knows <laughs> what the future will bring. <laughs> but, yeah, but I think what we are actually um, doing right now is addressing, you know, the need for, um, you know, to address the gap. Uh, the skills gap related to the new technologies that are being um, built that are emerging uh, during this time and the skills that we need to be able to function in that new world you know uh, and new world of work so yeah I mean there's always that possibility in the future we, but but right now you know there's no direction yet uh, another question from Sheila Lingaya. Are the contents in the mobile app accessible offline? Um, at the, uh, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Abby. <laughs> Should I? Okay. So at, ahead, at the moment, it's, a, it's an online platform, not yet accessible uh, offline. So you still need an internet connection to be able to access the content there. Uh, some more questions? Uh, siguro I want to add lang Sir Danny. Yes, ma'am. Um, I think, uh, yes, we, we really understand the, the need for accessibility, and it's really one of our concerns. Um, we all know that in the Philippines, we have very erratic uh, internet connection, and if, at best, if we have smartphones, sometimes very slow, you know, very slow connectivity. Um but uh, I think by, by, by virtue of the open data platforms modules created into mga bite-sized pieces or um, little um, topics, as we've seen earlier, um, I guess it would depend na lang on the user, like maybe uh, they can just accomplish, let's say, uh, 15 minutes for in the morning, depending on their, their signal or their internet connectivity. But they can always come back to it at any time to finish their learning, the to finish the module. All right. That's it. Compliment. Actually, this is not a question, but it's more of a compliment. Okay. From Jen Dakito, 
Thanks to IBM for creating this excellent and a comprehensive free digital education platform focused on workplace learning and digital skills, training in technologies such as AI, cloud computing, cybersecurity, design, thinking or thinking are industry related or industry driven which would significantly prepare students to keep abreast with these technologies and be ready for work industry 5.0 world wow what uh, a compliment. <laughs> thank you so much for that comment thank you thank you okay so thank you. there are no more questions uh on behalf of the commission on higher education regional office one one ma'am we thank you so much for uh, granting our invitation, okay? And hopefully, uh, next series of webinar, we can still invite you. Okay lang ba? Yes, sir. Please do. Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, yeah. So, okay any, lang, sir. any concluding statement or any encouragement for our uh, viewers and listeners to join your p ma'am? You want to go first? Abby, before me? Uh, okay, so I think um, as part of IBM uh, corporate social responsibility, we're just very happy to share um, Open P Tech to everyone. There is a bigger um, project of, of IBM, which is called P Tech. So P Tech is really the brick and mortar, as Ms. Andrea mentioned earlier. And uh, P Tech uh, really works with public schools in the Philippines to really uh, improve access and quality in our educational system. So that's the reason why uh, we really want to share the good news of PTEC to everyone in, in the Philippines. So we're just starting, this is just the tip of the iceberg, but uh, we're very happy and we also thank uh, Chedro Region 1 for this opportunity. Thank you to our friends there. Uh, and uh, thank you to all the viewers who've been watching us for the last one and a half hour so thank you thanks so much abby and again thank you to chedro for inviting us here uh, it is a real pleasure um for us to be given this opportunity because ibm actually you know in terms of our csr education is i would say you know the main focus of our csr and that's why you know in my presentation earlier you can see that we you know we really do have a lot of offerings for various now for various sectors or ages uh, for education and so we're just pleased that we have been given this opportunity to talk about open p tech more um and you know really do this at a very opportune time we we know how much it's needed and i'm glad that we you know were able to launch this this year even prior to you know the covid scare prior to all the lockdowns and so now it's very much appropriate and we're very happy to really offer this to everybody who is interested and so you know feel free to contact us if there are schools out there heads of schools faculty you know and you really want to use it immediately we can do that um and we can help you uh with your registration bulk registration so just let us know again thank you so much um to everybody and good afternoon okay once again ma'am um andrea and ma'am uh, abby thank you so much and on behalf of our uh, again in behalf of regional office and of course We'd like us to thank our 2,332 viewers for this series, or okay, 2,324, right to be exact, at this point in time. So thank you, our dear viewers. Please continue to stick with us to, to patronize our series of webinars. We have a lot of uh, topics in store for you uh, for June 9. At 9 a.m., we have uh, the topic maintaining positive well-being, coping mechanism strategies during the COVID-19 pandemic. And our speaker will be Professor Andrew S. Makalma from St. Louis University, Baguio. And for the second topic, at uh, exactly 10.30 a.m., we have uh, the topic Shejiang University best practices in addressing the impact of COVID-19 pandemic. Our resource speaker will be Professor 
Min Lee, the Director of the Office of Global Engagements, Sejiang University, Hangzhou, China. And of course, for one uh, p.m. afternoon session, uh, we have Sexual Orientation, Gender Identity, and Expression, or SUJI, Equality, Equality in the Philippines. Our resources speaker will be Honorable Geraldine B. Roman, District Representative, Bataan First District of House of Representatives. And of course, for the last uh, session in the afternoon session, uh, topic, Vulnerability of Elderly in Higher Education Institutions to COVID-19. And of course, our resource speaker will be Dr. Joel B. Beleno, the Medical Officer 5 of the Locos Training and Regional Medical Center or ITRMC, City of San Fernando, La Union. So we have a lot of exciting and very informative topics in store for you, ladies and gentlemen. So with that, on behalf of the Commission on Higher Education again, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, for your uh, certificates, please do not fail to accomplish this one, how to get an e-certificate. First, of course, you have to attend morning and afternoon session all right of course and then uh, the uh, feedback form uh, will be announced through a link after this session after this this session okay so third all you have to do is fill out the feedback form and then take the quiz on or before six o'clock p.m this afternoon okay and then uh, next those who pass or receive a passing mark of four out of six questions for the quiz will receive their certificate. Take note, four out of six uh, for the first take. And then, do we allow second take? A second take is discouraged. Okay? And for our previous sessions, you can just download your certificate at, take note, at, webinar.chedrow1.com I repeat, you can download your uh, certificate at webinar at chedrow1.com Ang ating, uh, ang ating uh, link is uh, https bit.ly slash ched cheds2 session1 uh, Again, again, again bit.ly slash ched to session one. That's the link where you're gonna uh, uh, download or uh, accomplish your uh, evaluation uh, form. All right? For you to get your, your e-certificate. Take note, bit.ly slash ched to session one. Don't forget. All right? So with that, uh, thank you so much once again and good afternoon and have an, a safe afternoon everyone. Thank you so much.